John Cooper, our lads guide to the NFL draft on with us last week. He'll be on with us here in just two, three seconds. And then also with us next week on the draft to break down various players' positions and focus a little bit as well, of course, on the Big 12 prospects, but others around the country. John, thank you very much for your time. Now, we understand there's a chance the quarterback, there's a run right off the top, and sometimes there is always a run. Is this year even more... Um, I'm not sure, frenetic when it comes to how many quarterbacks are taking those first five picks? Yeah, I think four is realistic. Um, you know, I, there was a time I thought maybe one of those guys would fall out of the top ten, but uh, I, I don't see that happening at this point. There's just too many quarterback needy teams, and, um, you know, there's some fits there too. Do you think that the fifth quarterback could be in the third round, like Hendon Hooker or Tanner McKee, somebody like that? I think Hendon Hooker would go very possibly in the second round. Uh, that's just my opinion. I mean, I watched him a lot, and I th- I'm not so sure if he didn't have the injury uh, that we wouldn't be talking about a first-round pick. Who is the best quarterback that's not getting much discussion? Uh, it, you know, I guess like a second wave of guys outside of the, the premier guys that are getting all the talk. You know, that second wave starts with probably going to the third, fourth, fifth round, uh, in in our view. Um, The guy that always sticks out to me is uh, Aiden O'Connell from Purdue. Uh, I've seen a lot of him. I've been watching defensive back play against him for the past, you know, two seasons. And, uh, you know, he doesn't have the mobility you look for in in an NFL quarterback, but he can move. I mean, he can – you watch the Tennessee game, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, the bowl game. He, he moves out of the pocket well. He senses the rush pretty well. He's not a burner. But uh, the thing is, he likes to stand in there and throw it. And the weakness he has is he'll put it under. He'll, he'll tries to force the ball sometimes into tight windows instead of creating, doing something with his feet. I mean, yeah, he's not, that's not his style. That's not what he does well. But he's very accurate. He's got decent velocity. Uh, he played in a relatively pro-style offense. And, uh, you know, I could see a guy like him going in the fourth, fifth round, being a really good backup for somebody that can play if needed and maybe develop into a starter down the road. The number of quarterbacks that could be drafted right off the top, is that because of the the teams that need quarterbacks, and there's always a chunk of them, or is that also to do with Jalen Carter and what happened with him and opening up maybe one of those top five picks or so? You know, I thought that. I'm not so sure. Uh, I, You know, we still have Carter in the top five. Um, yeah, I, I know all of you know, there's, mm-hmm. a, there's two issues there. Um, but if you just watch, if you turn on the tape and watch him play, I mean, that's what I'm going on. Uh, this is a phenomenal football player uh, that, you know, somebody, I got to believe that there's a coaching staff that has talked with him and feels like, hey, we can get a hold of this kid and we can turn him into something really special. Now, I could be wrong about that, and I'm sure there's maybe half the teams don't agree with that. But uh, I, I don't see him falling too far out of that uh, top five. I think he's still going to be a top ten pick. But I still think those quarterbacks uh, are going to be gone, four of them gone by eight, Carter notwithstanding. John, there are you know, two running backs that, that might go in the first round, and B. John Robinson, Jameer Gibbs, we talked about about them. After that, it seems like it's a, a, a pretty good position for teams like the Cowboys or the Bucks or somebody who needs a running back. Who do you like the most after those top two? Well, you know, the um, well, obviously, you know, Gibbs is a stud, but there's a bunch of guys that down the line that would be in the second, you know, slash third round. Um, the guy that comes that comes to mind for me is a little bit farther down the line is a kid from uh, East Carolina, uh, Mitchell. You know, I really like his speed. I like that he, the fact that he can catch the ball out of the backfield, and he's a hard runner. But he's not he's not probably the every down back, you know that that uh, you know maybe you're looking for. Um, you know, just uh, looking at it here. Oh, uh, Zach Charbonneau from UCLA, hard runner, big kid. Uh, he can. He's a guy that we think uh, could be a, a really quality second-round pick. There's, um, 
you know, a couple other guys too that uh, are in that that same mold as he is. Um, Devin Shane is the fastest back in this draft. Uh, that's a kid that, if you're looking for straight speed, you know, he's a guy that uh, you know you're going to take a look at. Um, you know, and we really like him. Uh, you know, as far as just a, a guy that if you take him out there, he can run. I know you've probably seen him, you know, where you're at. Um, Tank Bigsby from Auburn is a hard runner. He's got decent speed. Can make, they don't call him Tank for nothing. He can make yards after contact. And a guy down the line just a little bit that I really like is Tajay Spears from Tulane. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really like the way he plays. I like the fact that he can make yards after contact. He's got decent speed. He's just a hard running guy who's going to make uh, he's the kind of guy you want if you need a first down give it to this kid and he might break it besides um like him you know there, there's some guys there that i think are really good players that most of the guys i mentioned are you know third fourth round picks probably um charbonneau could go in the second shane possibly could go in the second uh but um you know after gibbs you know you're looking at lower second round into the third and fourth round guys, but they're solid players. A chain, the kid from A&M, the young man who can, like you say, just blast it. I call him a Shane. That, Shane. That, that's okay. But yeah. does, does he remind you? Cause a lot of time when you see a diminutive running back, people think about like Darren Sproles or whoever else is it, is he more of maybe even more durable, more of an every down guy, or, or do you have to kind of pick and choose with him? Well, I think in any in the, in the running back world today, most teams have two guys that they're using. You know, they like they have one guy that can pound away and one guy that can get outside. And I think Shane is your guy that can get outside. He can run inside um, as well. But he, that's, you know, he's getting him in the outside zone, getting him wide. Uh, he's He's got a chance to hit a home run for you. Uh, so, yeah, I think he's more of an every down back, but yet I think still, He's going to be a most effective as part of a, a two-headed monster at the running back position. We had somebody in the chat room ask me, and you mentioned quarterbacks, and I don't know about his chances of being drafted or whatever, but he had a great run, an overachiever in Max Duggan at TCU. Well, you can't li- you can't not like this kid. He's hard not to like in terms of you look at what he overcome. The thing I like, you know, is the fact that he was basically benched and said, no, I'm not going to transfer. I'm going to be the best backup quarterback I can be, and if if that, and yeah, I'm going to try to still be the starter. And lo and behold, that's what he did. I mean, he's a gamer. Uh, he's the kind of guy I'd like to have on my team. I'd say he's in that fifth-round uh, conversation as well. And, you know, we like him probably better than some other people do. We've got him at number 11 uh, just because we think he's uh, the type of guy that will make plays. Uh, he can run. Uh, he's not the greatest thrower. He didn't have the greatest accuracy, but, you know, he's a playmaker type quarterback. And, um, you know, somebody's going to draft him and somebody's going to have a guy that's going to be a quality backup that they're going to try to develop into something more than that. John Cooper, our lads scouting service, our lads guide to the NFL draft. John, how do you feel about the cornerbacks in this draft? I think it's a, I think, they're not necessarily what you would call uh, elite, you know, cornerbacks as far as in comparison to maybe some other years, but there's a lot of them. There's a lot of depth. If you want a corner, you're going to be able to find one in this draft that has redeeming qualities, you know, you know, all the way down the line. I mean, the, the top four or five that could be in the first round, you know, even they have some holes, but the, but the top two are guys that I think could be potentially top 10 picks in Gonzalez and Witherspoon. I mean, who do you want? Uh, Witherspoon, extremely tough. Um, and we haven't seen him run yet because of the injury. We're a little nervous about that. But uh, Gonzalez, uh, he had a phenomenal year for Oregon and, and climbed up the charts. So, you know, those are, you know, two really good players. But there's some guys down the road that can play as well. John, going to – Back to TCU and just in the Big 12 running back room in general. Uh, you talked last week about Quentin Johnston. You just talked about Max Duggan. I think you also hit on Trevious Thomason uh, last time as well. But how much have you been able to see of the running back, Kendry Miller, 
um, from TCU. Had a tremendous year. Unfortunately, you know, was a little dinged up there towards the end. And in line with that, if you would, just kind of a two-parter here with, with Big 12 backs. Uh, Smokey mentioned diminutive, uh, you know, size coming into play. Deuce Vaughn, an all-world everything back, but not the biggest guy in the world. Your thoughts on Kendry Miller of TCU and, and Deuce Vaughn of K-State? Well, Kendry Miller, you know, is a, you know, has got decent size to size. He's a, you know, he's 220. And, you know, he's a kid that, uh, you know, we think, you know, he's probably a mid-round pick, but he's a solid football player. He can run. He's got decent speed. Um, you know, and, and in, a, in a you know running back is not that priority position for a lot of NFL teams anymore. But you know, as a mid-round pick, I think he's got a chance to play for you. Uh, you know, Deuce Vaughn is a, is a you know one of those guys that is got great speed. Um, you know, he's not the, the biggest, uh, I guess, the diminutive, if you want to use that term. Not the biggest guy in the world uh, at 176 pounds, 5'0", five, 5'6", five, from the combine. But he can run. He's got tremendous what we call wiggle, uh, agility in traffic. Uh, you know, if he gets out on that corner and he sticks his foot in the ground, he's a tough guy to find. And sometimes that lack of size works to his advantage. We've seen some pretty good backs that have been pretty small, that have great speed and great agility. And uh, that's the kind of back Deuce Vaughn is. So, you know, he's not an every down back, but uh, he's a guy that is going to be on your football team, and somebody's going to draft him in that middle round area, uh, and he's going to be a player. You know, uh, you uh, joined us last week for the first time. We've enjoyed it. Uh, have you again next week. Where are teams now and, and you hear about their draft board. There are still pro days going on. Baylor's is coming up around the corner. Uh, there's a lot to still get to. In your opinion, how does an NFL team start to piece that together or when? And when do they have to have it done? Well, they've got a board, you know, established already, but that's always, you know, uh, a work in progress. Uh, it's a working board, if you if you will. And, when the pro days are all done, most teams bring all the scouts in and the coaches and they sit down and they go through these players and they set their board. And they've got a preliminary board and then they've got a board uh, that they're going to finalize. And they, they spend, you know, a good couple of weeks going over each position and stacking those players according to where the grades are from the scouts and according to what the coaches, the coaches have been told, the secondary coach, watch the corners on tape, tell us what you think. Uh, watch the safeties, the running back coach. He's going to watch the running backs, and they're going to come back with reports, and they're going to kind of cross-check each other, and then they'll they'll set their board. And then there's some last-minute things that come in the week of the draft. Uh, it used to be, I don't know if it's still that way, that they'd have the security report would come in, and it would be, is there any baggage in this guy? Does he have outstanding warrants for arrest? Is he, is he doing things that he shouldn't be that we picked up on? Uh, and the medical report will come in, the final medical report, which will say, is there something in this guy's history that makes it not likely that he's going to be able to play or or he's not going to have very much longevity? And those kind of things can have an, a factor. And sometimes it's just a little worry, and it's enough to drop a guy. The guy that uh, you know I think of last year is McCoby Dean, who uh, potentially had – they believe, believe the need for a surgery, and um, we had him as a first-round pick, and we're wondering what happened. Well, on that medical report, something must have come back because he went all the way down into the third round before he got picked. So that those are the kinds of things that last-minute things that come up that change the board. But it's a work, like, like I said, it's a work in progress. John, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Look forward to next week with you. Uh, John Cooper, Our Lads Scouting Service, Our Lads Guide to the, the NFL Draft. Enjoy that. Thank you. Some of you on the chat room.